where um, you can pay for the things and then you can like buy stuff. A shirt, um, a shirt and stickers. I kept my promise. Here I am, back to discuss Dave Hollis exploiting his children. As Dave Hollis would say, let's go! Welcome back to my channel. This is Kia's World. If you don't know who Dave Hollis is, uh, you might know who his ex-wife is, Rachel Hollis, who was and currently sort of still is a self-help guru who teaches women how to be better. He used to be a Disney executive and then he quit to join his wife's company. Very quickly, that did not work out. They got divorced and now he is a self-help influencer in his own right and one of the things that bothers me the most about him is that he uses his children his very young children like under five years old eight nine years old he's got multiple children uh in his content and it's supposed to be cute and quirky and funny and it is none of those things in reality you know what this is called what? this is a cardigan cardigan it's called a cardigan it's exploitative in my opinion, and it really does not get across any sort of lessons or teachings or anything. It's just really just bad content in general. So today we're gonna watch episode three of Ford for Thought. This one features Dave and his son. And without further ado, let's go to the video. And I just, before I even begin, I want to point out that the production value on the videos that he features his children in are like zero to none, very low production value. And at first I was like, well, that's his brand. You know, he's this like, self-help influencer but wants to be relatable and seem like he's accessible even though he's like a multi-millionaire and you know has this huge house with a go-kart track and whatever he wants to make it seem like he's just like you like how his ex-wife rachel did um very relatable and like i just use my phone i don't have a production crew i just you know i'm connecting to you just as you, as you connect to me um but if you look at his other videos that actually don't perform as well um, you'll see that there is a higher production value. So there is money being spent. He has access to videographers and editors. And so take a look at this one. Hey, it's a new segment on my YouTube channel called Twitter's Not Always a Dumpster Fire. Top tweets. Okay, this video doesn't even matter what he's talking about. It's like a horrible video that I do not recommend either. But you can see, I mean, the video quality is high. Um, he's got an obviously like a, they call it a, a bouquet, you know, in the background, a blurry background. So you really can't get that on an iPhone unless, you know, 13 maybe, but that this is before the 13 came out. So it's obviously on a, a nice camera. He has an opening with music. I mean, this takes some professionalism. Um, to get it going. So he obviously understands the value of having a production crew. Um, he's currently doing a like fitness challenge with his girlfriend, Heidi. They hired a production crew to help facilitate that. So he's not stupid. <laughs> he's worked with video production crews before. He has access to buying and you know purchasing a crew to help him out produce videos. So when he makes these videos with his children, it's almost like an afterthought type of like, just put my phone and whatever happens, happens. But he uses it as promotional material to sell his books. He's actually writing or wrote a children's book about his daughter um, that he's going to be promoting soon. He's actually, which I think this is insane. <laughs> okay, bear with me. Dave Hollis is coming out with a documentary. Hey there, Dave Hollis here. I am a New York Times bestselling author, a podcast host, a coach, but I've also just released a new book called Built Through Courage. And we thought what better way to celebrate its release than having an evening in theaters with my crew to help inspire your crew. Why not take the themes of the book and the conversations that influenced it in movie theaters? Come hang out on November 17th for an evening of courage. So he's making the documentary to promote the book. Um, the book comes out in like a week and the documentary comes out in like two weeks. And the documentary is gonna be a one day thing in November and you have to go that day to watch it. It features a bunch of self-help charlatans. 
um, that are, you know, talking to Dave about their own courageous stories and whatever. Part of the documentary premiere, they're actually going to show a brand new Ford for Thought episode. So I guess presumably it'd be episode four. This is episode three we're going to watch today. And it's the same production value. So it's not like this is just for fun. That's my point. It's not like this is just a fun side thing that his kids really want him to do and he's letting his kids express their creativity. This is built into his promotion, to his money-making ventures. I'm just trying to say that this is not just a fun thing that I'm picking on him and that's just like part of his, you know, channel but not really part of his branding. This is the branding. <laughs> this is being gonna, this type of content, the way it's shot, the way it's done, the way it's handled, it's gonna be in theaters so just wanted to say that before we even get started okay done with that let's go to the video all right uh oh we're recording but we're off a little bit oh there we go we got to get you in here oh there we go <laughs> i know i'm sorry but Shouldn't you have cut this part out? There's like, can there be a tiny bit of editing? Like this is like him doing the camera. Like, come on, come on. Wait. Welcome to Ford for Thought, episode three. Episode three of Ford for Thought. Fort Hollis returned from camp yesterday. And the first thing out of his mouth was, can we record an episode of Ford for Thought? For what is my prediction is that if that is true, which who knows, um, that this is probably the only way that he knows that he can spend quality one on one time with his dad, because he doesn't even have his full attention in this video. As you'll see, I'll point it out along the way that Dave seems totally distracted and not really engaging with his son, even though this is supposed to be all about his son. But I think the kids have learned over time that if they want their parents attention, they have to be content. As someone who went through similar experiences, not with their parents on TV and whatnot, but trying to get your parents to care about what you're doing, you find the ways that it works. So for me, it was like winning at sports or winning an award, you know, that was a way to connect with my parents. If I didn't win, then I felt like I wasn't connecting to my parents. So yes, it can be disappointing. Um, let's say he doesn't feel like going on camera the next day or whatever, you know, that might mean that he doesn't get any time with his dad. Now that's not, I don't know that to be true for sure. That's just a thought that I had that could be happening. Who knows? I don't know this family in real life, but I just wanted to put that out there. What is this week's episode about? Camp. Well, of course it is. Welcome home, son. All right, you have been at camp for how long? Three weeks. Three weeks at camp. That's a long time to be gone. Uh, <laughs> His son is slowly <laughs> moving out of the frame. We're, we're getting it more addressed to Dave. <laughs> he's going to move it back in a second, but I just thought it's funny. Like He's like, okay, you've said your part. Mm, back to me now. <laughs> Sorry. What was the best part about being at camp? Um, making new friends. Making new friends. Do you have any new friends' names that you can share with us today? Um, um, shout out to Otto. I, I, I know I said this in the Heidi one. Heidi was more like fixing her hair during the whole video. But Dave, again, also is very camera sensitive. He does not look at, like right now, Ford is looking at him like, so this is my friend's name and blah, blah, blah. And Dave is looking right at the camera. Dave cares about the viewers and making this video look good or entertaining in some way. And his son just cares about trying to talk to his dad. That's what I get from this basic setup right here. Austin. Otto Austin. Eli, Evan. Eli and Evan. Uh, Henry. Oh, Henry. Ryan. Ryan. Matthias. Oh my goodness, you got a whole crew. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, also to Cameron. Oh, Cameron, we don't want to forget Cameron. You have a lot Charlie. of- Charlie. Charlie. Hello, Charlie. Uh, you have a lot of bug bites on your body. Yep. You want to talk to me about the bug sitch at camp? 
Yeah, so I, um, the last night I was at camp, we slept outside. Oh. Um, so, just, um, ju just to show you. Let's see, we got a little visual evidence here, a little proof. Oh my. You've got bumps everywhere, dude. Yeah. Okay. So there's that. How, how is the air conditioning... That's okay, it's recorded. There's a, there's a microphone on here too. Um, <laughs> I said this before as well. The mic, he knows now he's figuring out that the microphones are fake. Um, you can tell based on the, like, the audio quality that they're, the microphones that they hold are just for show. Um, and I always wondered that, like they have the microphones. They have a, a very high quality, expensive, sure microphone. Why don't you plug it into something so that this can actually be something that's better than uh, putting your cell phone on and recording, having it go in and out of focus. I don't, it's just such a low quality production that it makes it, it to me, it, it's embarrassing because he is touting himself as a professional as well as he does put money into having a professional editor and a videographer when it's about him. But when it's with his kid, he's like, eh, whatever, like we'll just do the bare minimum, but then uses that as his main content. I don't know. It's very odd. How is the air conditioning at camp? We can't talk about air conditioning on camp. Why? There is none. There's no air conditioning at a Texas camp. I mean, I mean, like, when you go into, like, little stores that they have, there's one called Neiman Marcus. Like Neiman Marcus? Yes. It's actually called Neiman Marcus. Mm -hmm. Do they have high-end designer goods? Mm-hmm. No. Yeah, they have it. Like, it's the, it's the shop. Like, you can online shop. Like, all the things on the online shop is in there. Oh, okay. I see. And is it, like, snacks and stuff? Mm-mm. No. It's, like, clothes and... Oh. Um... It's, like, swag. It's, like, yes. it's, it's, their, it's their merch shop. Yes. Oh, okay. These guys are smart. They got a merch shop. Uh, and, or, and it's kind of one of the activities. Oh. So, um, you also get these things called champs, where, um, you can pay... For here we go, texting Dave, or at least Dave looking at his phone. Um, you know, Ford, obviously, well, I'll go back a second, but Ford can tell. You can see that he notices that he's not paying attention. Camps, where um, you can pay for the things, and then you can, like, buy stuff. Um, you Look, oh, God. This bothers me so much because, okay, so that just little interaction is fine you know okay whatever he's got a maybe it's an emergency who knows but you can see ford is so interested in getting his dad's attention he even physically puts a hand on his shoulder to direct the attention back to him because dave is over here looking down at his cell phone presumably texting somebody um so it shows that okay dad hey physically look at me I'm telling you something, you don't seem interested. You can pay for the things and then you can like buy stuff. Um, you or um, you have to pay pay the camp to get these champs, but you didn't do that this year. You're so, welcome. But why is that you're welcome? Oh, sorry, I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry that I'm stopping it so much, but I just have to comment. Um, so, so Ford says, you know, that you get these points or tokens, they're called champs at his camp. And um, I'm assuming it's like money, you know, in an account, like a commissary type thing for kids. He's saying, you didn't fuel my uh, points and you didn't put money on my card so I couldn't buy anything. And he says, you're welcome. But he obviously wasn't listening because he was saying, why is that you're welcome? <laughs> that I couldn't spend money at this camp where everyone else was you know, spending money and had their parents were active and putting stuff on their, their account. So it's like, he, doesn't, he didn't listen, number one. Number two, his son is telling him and kind of outing him again and saying, you didn't put money on my account, which you know, kind of shows that he was negligent in knowing what was going on at this camp. I meant to say, I'm sorry. <laughs> we need to get some things for you is what you're saying. <laughs> All right. 
Weird laugh, looking back at the phone, Ford seems confused. Let's just go back again and watch that whole little interaction just to just to cement it in our minds as to how awkward this was. Pay pay the camp to get these champs. But you didn't do that this year. You're welcome. Why, why is that you're welcome? Oh, sorry. I mean, I'm sorry. I meant to say I'm sorry. <laughs> we need to get some things for you is what you're saying. He got really red too, like as if he's embarrassed that this was again <laughs> talked about in a video that he has to post on YouTube. And I said he has to post. He doesn't have to post it. It doesn't make any sense why he's making these videos in the first place. So I don't know why he's, maybe he's, I don't know. He's promised somebody something that he's gonna make these videos. I have no idea why this is even produced. All right. Uh... Well, I mean, uh, you can, like, if you stay for three weeks, you get 33 champs, or if you stay for four weeks, you get 44. What did you buy with your champs? I bought a shirt, um, a shirt and stickers. Oh, a shirt and stickers. Yeah, for your trunk, which they, that. So basically Dave's uh, way of, of interacting with his son is to repeat everything that he says. Uh, I find this method of speaking completely annoying. I hate when people do this to me. You can tell immediately that they're not actually comprehending or digesting what you're saying. They're just like, oh, you're doing good? Oh, good. Oh, the, um, a white shirt? Oh, white, a white shirt, okay. It's like, you're, are you listening to me? Like, are you hearing what I'm saying? Because this, why are you repeating everything? Like, I know there's a camera, but Ford is completely capable of expressing himself clearly. It's not like he's mumbling and Dave needs to reiterate so that the audience knows what he's saying. He just doesn't have anything to add, it sounds like. That you have to have to put all your, like, clothes in. And again, he's on his phone, on his phone. So annoying. Um, and, wait, I forgot the other thing. Okay, fair enough. Uh, technology free for 20 days. That sounds like a great idea. How I Dave can't be technology free for 20 seconds. How's it? Um, a good sort of source of vitamin D. Um, Sunlight? Yes. Oh, okay. I, I, th I, really, I really hoped you would say, what's sunlight? What is sunlight? <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so you... <laughs> weird. I'm sorry, that laugh is weird. You had no tech. How did you possibly entertain yourself without technology? There's like a crap ton of activities. Oh, is crap ton a technical term or a camp term? A camp term. Oh, a camp term. There's a crap ton of activities. No, no not a camp term. A <laughs> technical term. Oh, it's a technical term. It's a technical term. Crap ton. Uh, what did you do? <clears throat> oh, clears his throat. Okay. Um, We're back um, to adjusting the camera. Outdoors. Outdoors. Which you do like a bunch of different, like smaller activities. Give me an example of a smaller activity. Fishing. Fishing. Did you catch any fish? Four. What? Yeah, I got. I got like. I was the one. One of the best people who. who uh, were, like. Once you catch one fish, you catch another and then another and then another and oh, then another. Oh. You went on a run. On. You went on a run. And that fishing thing was for like. 30 minutes. And you caught four fish in 30 minutes? Yes. Do you think that maybe the fishing down by the pond was a little unfair advantage for you because you actually know how to fish? Not really, because the... I was, I was hoping for a yes. I mean, it's not really an advantage because if you, if you fish, there's no like practice like doing this or anything like that. Oh. Because they're just sticks, barely any line, and then a hook. A stick on a string with a hook? Oh, that's old school fishing. Yes. Yeah, that's camp fishing. All right, what, what, what else was a part of the crap ton of activities? Um, um, the climbing wall. Ooh, the climbing wall. Is it, as it sounds, a wall that you climb? Yes. Oh, yes. Did you climb to the top? Yes. Heck yeah, you did. Good work, buddy. Proud of you. Up top. Uh, what else? There needs to be more moments like that, I think, where he's, okay, repeating it, whatever, and then 
asking him how did it go it went well great good job i think that's positive reinforcement and if that was the whole video i would be much more supportive of this content however it is just a tiny little sliver of what the whole video is so i like that moment i think that's a good moment but i wish there was more of that um did you swim the lake that is for Aquanauts and Maxis. Those are, that's for Aquanauts and Maxis. What level are you? A rookie. You're a rookie. Even though this is your third year, you're a rookie. Fourth. Fourth year, <laughs> rookie. Not a huge slip. I know people forget, but it's like, it kind of feels to me like Dave acts like he's such an invested dad. He calls himself a single dad, which I think is kind of ridiculous because he has nannies he has an ex-wife that he shares custody with that is you know a mother he's not like living you know somewhere with all these kids full time by himself with no help so you know single dad i think is a stretch um but he says like he's such an involved dad and that he you know cares about his kids so much yet he doesn't know that his kid's been at camp four times not three and he doesn't know the ranking of his son's you know, camp name. Is that a, a horrible thing that can never be, you know, made up? Of course not. It's fine. But at the same time, it's like if you're selling books based on how good of a dad you are, it, to me, it's like these are little details that you should probably know. Okay. Uh, but did you at least get to go in the lake? Yes. Yes. Did you get to jump on the thing that when you land on it, it shoots a human being off of it? The blob, yes. The blob. <laughs> Did you like jumping on it or did you like being launched off of it more? What do you think? Being launched off. Yes. Everyone likes being launched <laughs> yes. off more. What are we, what are we even talking about? Uh, did you do archery? Sadly. That, that's only on outdoors and we, the, we did like a bunch of activities over and over again. So I okay. didn't do it. No archery. Did you shoot a BB gun? Nope. Not yet. Did you get to drive the cars yet? That's for Aquanauts and Letterman. These Aquanauts and Letterman get all the perks. What the heck? Yeah. Uh, okay. I saw that you were making some amazing stuff in craft. I love that you get to use your artistic wonder. What did you make in the, in the craft room? Um, it was not a craft room. Oh, excuse me. I'm being corrected. It's an arts uh, art room. It's an art room. What did you make in the art room? I... Painted. Well, you painted something with clouds because I saw a picture of something with clouds. It was my name tag, but then I but then I scratched that idea. It seemed like such a good idea. I, then I made like a splatter painting that's now like really cool at camp. Oh, like a little Jackson Pollock kind of thing. Yep, like it. Like there's white and then a little. <laughs> I don't think <laughs> I don't think Ford knows who Jackson Pollock is, but. Dave wanted to make sure that you knew that was a joke that he had made and that it was funny. He's like so smug. I can't stand him. Sorry. Okay. That was maybe too personal, but it's just like, is this a conversation for your child or is this like, what is this for? I don't know what this video is for. A little bit of purple. Yeah. And then a little bit of gold and a little bit of black. It's, and then I couldn't write my name on it. So then that was the end of the color, color war thing. That's it. Oh, speaking of color war, did you guys do the Trojan Spartan, Trojan Spartan war? I feel like this is spoiling a too much of camp or too much like of camp. It's giving too much away. Yes. Like this is the end of the book and we've told them who was the like person responsible for the murder. No, no. <laughs> what? What are you talking about? Oh my God. I don't think uh, in a video about your child with your child, you should bring up murder in any way when they're nine years old. That's just a rule of thumb. I think that we can all agree on. Um, and I think, wow, like Ford honestly is more mature and values this, you know, the, the sacredness of camp and the memories that he made that he doesn't feel like he wants to share it with the whole world because it's special to him and to the organization that he was a part of. To me, that is such a bigger and better lesson than asking every question and giving up every secret right away to the, you know, the audience of YouTube or, or whatever. It's really interesting that Ford, honestly, I think if anything is teaching a better lesson than Dave could ever teach. 
and yet he considers himself, you know, super dad, super self-help dude. It's, it's funny and, and interesting and telling about this dynamic. One between the Trojans and the Spartans. Spartans, obviously. Obvi. And what kind of events do you have in this epic battle? Um, Is there a tug of war? Yeah. There's got to be a tug of we war. We won. You won? Yep. Were you a part of the rope pulling in the tug of war? Yes. Of course you were. Uh, is there any kind of water balloon activity? We couldn't do water, like any... They said they would do water Trojan Spartan Wars. Yes. We got on our bathing suits, and I put paint on, but then, but then they didn't do it, so I couldn't wash the paint off. Oh. And then that got in my swimsuit, which now my swimsuit is red. Okay. We have a red, we have a red swimsuit. Good work. Well, then I, like, kind of, like... I kind of power washed it off with the hose and my thumb. Oh, oh it's like a do-it-yourself at-home uh, gardening show as well as a uh, camp explanation. I like this. Uh, what? <laughs> I don't know if we should even get into this, but uh, were there any ladies there? Yes. Oh, geez. Here <laughs> we go. Here we go. Did you make any lady friends at camp this year? Yes. <sighs> Should we name this person out loud or are we no, going to keep no, her quiet? No, no, no. All right, we're no. keeping her quiet. Let him have some privacy. Let him have a girl crush in private or a crush in general privately. Do we have, like, he's the one who brought it up. And you know, Ford is, you know, willing to talk about it. But it's like, this is like, ugh, I don't know. Some people might think that's cute to like, oh, talk about your crush, let's talk about it. But to me, it's just like, they're little children, let's not make it something that it's not, I don't know. What happened? Um, was, kissed... was the, wait, well, hold on, hold on, what? <laughs> I kissed her on the hand. You kissed her on the hand? <laughs> what in the world? Back of hand, front of hand? Back. Well, I mean, like, you're not a germ person. That's good. Okay. Now, was there any drama involving you and this other person and maybe another person? Yes. Love triangle. <laughs> Love triangle. Do you want to explain? Um, so, this guy, the Ryan guy. Oh, we're calling out names of the other human. Okay. Yes. Ryan. Ryan, the guy who's in my cabin, also like this young lady that anonymous, I liked. Anonymous lady. Um, so, um, I, or I'm also very cold because, um, You're I, not used to air conditioning? I'm not, I'm not used to air conditioning. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you and Ryan both like this girl. What happened? I obviously want her. Well, duh. <laughs> yeah, duh. Obby. <laughs> That, that was one of my um, ju er, young counselors. His name was Avi. Avi? Oh, wow. Avi. And uh, do you and this uh, anonymous young lady have plans for a wedding? No. We were going to be pen pals. You were going to be pen pals. But Dave's the only one that immediately goes to a wedding when he dates someone for two seconds. Um, <laughs> pen pals seems like a much more appropriate um, second step but in Dave's world um, you're divorced for two months and you immediately get into a very serious relationship immediately <laughs> so that's Dave's advice uh, I would take Ford's if I was the viewer she just said um, you, we both know that long distance relationships never work. What? Why would you tell me this? And, because she also... <laughs> Dave claims to be in a long distance relationship with Heidi because she lives in Arizona and he lives in Texas, but they see each other, like, more than most couples who live in the same city see each other. Um, because they are flying back and forth constantly and take weeks at a time where they're together and... You know, they're letting the kids go to the nanny and all that. So, um, so he, you know, Ford's saying long-distance relationships never work. Uh, I don't think he even thinks about Heidi as a long-distance relationship because they see each other so much. But that's what Dave's referring to. And he's like, why would you tell me that? Oh, it's like, okay. I forgot the note that I gave her. 
He also got red again. Did you notice that? His face is so red. Like he is rea his body is reacting to the comments that Ford makes, but he's not reacting <laughs> with words, which I think is interesting. <laughs> so maybe you guys will go to camp next year and uh, rekindle the flame. Um, we also had to break up. No! <laughs> you broke up? Now, did she break up with you or did you break up with her? I broke up with her. You had to let her down easy. Well, I mean, we're, we're still friends. You're still friends. But... Did you say, it's not you, it's me? How did you do it? Um, we just, we both agreed on it. You agreed on it? Yeah. Oh, that's, that's the best way to do it. Just agreed. All right, head back home. No, no hard feelings. Uh, uh, we just were, were like, uh, we were, we're the kind of like couple who, were, I mean, we're not like really a thing. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, we were the kind of couple who made fun of each other. Oh, that's perfect. I love that. That's the kind of couple I am with Heidi. Um. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's the truth Dave and I love how Ford's like uh-huh anyways like he's I'm sure he's sick of hearing about Heidi you know the the video that uh Ford did with Heidi every two seconds Heidi was bringing up Dave and when I say uh like like make fun of me is that she like chases me around with like a water gun or something feels right you're eight almost nine nine in two days two days away Nine years old, Ford Hollis. She's also a year younger than me. Oh. Or a year older than me. Oh, a little bit older than you. An older woman. So that was one of the reasons why I had to break up with her. Because she was a little too old. That's, that, seems, that seems odd. Do you, you want a high five? That feels like a weird place to high five. Yeah. All right. I think That was the only funny moment in the whole video. That's uh, it for this week's episode of Ford for Thought. Are there any parting thoughts, Ford Hollis? Um, we are like tea time with Noah, but like the the intro, we're making an intro, okay? Yeah, we're making an intro. We're just starting out here, so stick with us. Let's see where the show goes, shall we? All right, love you, brother. So this one to me was not as egregious as the other two that I showed in my last video, but also just showed a couple of little, I don't know, issues that I find a pop up a lot in Dave Hollis's life and his interactions with Ford. Um, I think at the end too, it shows that, you know, Ford wants to be an equal with Noah. Noah is Dave's daughter and she got a, a book written about her from Dave, uh, a children's book and is had the show first so i think it shows it's a little bit of evidence to show that you know the children want to be a part of their dad's life and uh, at least the, the younger children his older children don't want to be on social media at all i think that's perfect and a really good idea for you know the children as they get older but when you're eight years old when you're five years old you a probably don't have a chance or a choice in the matter whether you're on the show or not and b if your younger sister gets attention you're probably going to want your own show too and it just creates this like weird environment where the kids are competing for dad's attention and I don't like that. So Dave Hollis is coming out with a new book. It's called Built Through Privilege. I'm sorry, I messed that up again. It's called Built Through Courage. Um, it comes out officially on the 20 something of October. So once it comes out, I'm gonna read it. I've heard pretty uh, basic things about it, about you know when he's been doing his promotion for this book. Um, and a side note, so he was promoting, he's been promoting this book on people's podcasts for like the last two months. Um, you know, doing the circuit of self-help podcasts, blah, blah, blah. And I guess he assumed uh, that he was going to get national media attention because of this book. So he thought he was going to be in New York City doing like a, at least one. He mentioned Good Morning America as a potential 
on camera spot. And apparently they decided or GMA um, decided that they were not interested, which makes total sense. I don't know why they would be interested in the first place, but um, he didn't get the, the booking to appear on Good Morning America. So he at the last minute switched from doing national press promotion in New York to now he's going for two weeks around like the Midwest area. Uh, for fan meetups and to promote the book near bookstores they have not announced the locations because it is such a last minute uh glue it together really fast idea that apparently Heidi has come up with um it's like it kind of is showing and telling that this book is probably not doing very well in pre-sales and probably will not do that well when it comes out for for you to call yourself courageous is just the biggest joke in the entire world. And he was really salty about getting bumped from GMA or, or not getting picked up from GMA. And basically in, in this rant, I, I will go into this more when I do the book review, but he um, was talking to this guy on his Instagram and basically he said that people were giving him a bad review and that they probably hadn't even read the book and that you know people were saying that he doesn't have any credentials to write a book on courage and that those people, who think that, which would be someone like me, uh, are all deeply hurt and traumatized. And there's me we have mental illness, essentially, is what he was saying, that we're all deeply you know, unhappy with ourselves and that there's something wrong with us that we would feel that way about him. Let me tell you how horribly wrong that assumption is. The price of admission, and this is what the guy said to him in the interview, which I totally agree with, the price of admission to being a celebrity or to being a, you know, an influencer or to be forward facing on the camera or sharing your entire life on the internet, there's going to be criticism. Now, if people were saying that he's fat and ugly and stupid and he should go back to his country, obviously I think those people are wrong for saying those things. But for people who are being critical about the book or giving him legitimate feedback, which is what I've seen and what I think I give him to be quite honest for the most part, it's that's part of this world. If you wanted to stay anonymous, go back to Disney and work there. But the fact that you want a book called Built Through Courage, but that you don't think that anyone should be able to criticize or question if you're the right person to write a book with that title, that is the opposite of courage. That is being a coward. And I think Dave just is so in an echo chamber where he's surrounded by these self-help people that don't allow limiting beliefs into their world that he has totally lost touch with reality. Just because you write a book, Dave, doesn't mean that it deserves to be a bestseller. And I think that is a limiting belief that he should work on and get through. Anyways, that's the end of this video. Uh, if you liked it, please like it, subscribe, comment. I love hearing all your comments about this stuff um, and on the whole saga. And I did officially make the Patreon. Um, I set up one tier. It's just for support for now. I'm going to start loading in my old videos so you can watch them without ads um, as a perk of being a patron. If you'd like to support me and in, in this endeavor, like I said in my last video, um, I've gotten rid of a lot of my client work so I could spend more time doing these videos because I really like them. I think there's a lot of topics we can talk about in the self-help space, how it's dangerous, how it can lead to childhood trauma, which I think we're seeing play out right now in these types of videos. Um, you can follow me at our Patreon. Patreon. I'll put up, I'll put the label up here. It's Kia's World, so you can search it, or I'll put the link here and I'll put it in the description. And you know, we'll see where it goes. Um, I would love to have more interaction with the community, be able to talk about story ideas and topics um, without having the barrier of like finding me on Twitter, which is here. In case you wanted to follow me on Twitter, choose sadness. See you next time. Bye.